What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial today. I want to go over some quick blueprint coding good practices, okay? This is not such as a step-by-step -step tutorial like I usually do. This is more of me just directly giving you some useful tips, okay? So with that said, there's no editing going on. More straight to the point is a new thing that I'm trying out. So let's go over some of the first good practices that I want to mention in this video and we'll basically escalate from very basic obvious stuff to more things that you might not be aware right now that you can implement into your brights to be more efficient. So the first thing which is obvious is overall having all blueprint classes organized especially from the start throughout the content browser okay. So this involves you know essentially organizing all your classes into subfolders like for example I can create a new folder over here and this will be my main blueprints folder with that said I can create another one and this will be for the attack system so let me create another folder for attack and essentially let me put this like this oh yeah I need to do like this okay Hold on. I just had a B in lowercase I want to be in the higher case anyway uh, with that said, I can create, you know, a uh, attack folder and on here I can have, for example, the components, right, for the attack uh, system. This is very, very important because it will facilitate yourselves throughout the development of the project and extend the durability of the project because in the long term, if you want to add new classes and you have them all in one folder, mess around, you cannot essentially grow out this project and it will make your life easier. Okay, so I definitely recommend that. With that being said, let's jump in into the next one, which is a thing that a lot of people are not actually aware. It seems like they're aware, but not aware at the same time. And this is actor components. So yes, in Unreal, you can create separate actor classes that you can add as a component into other classes such as actors. So for example, people tend to use filling the main third person character blueprint with all of the player code and we end up with a huge events graph with all of the attack inventory um combat and whatever else is the swimming systems and everything in one blueprint and it just makes up mayhem okay so what we can do very efficiently is split this into different classes and add them as components over here so for example let me go back into my you know attacks uh blueprint uh, folder and i can create a new blueprint class and this will be an actor component so i could name this something as vpc underscore um attack uh, system right and this is my attack system and in here i can have all of my code for the attack system so for example in the begin play i can do whatever i want i can have my attack speed variables right and whatever so then in the third person i can directly add over here my bpc if i know how to spell attack system and now i have it as a component and all the logic external in another blueprint and on here i can reference the variables for example i can set the uh, attack speed that i just created and we can essentially here put like when you uh, press the left mouse button we will do a sphere trace by channel and you know do a uh, play montage right and here exactly do what would we would do in the uh, third person but instead on the you know actor component and you will end up essentially with a more organized code rather than have everything in the player and you separate it and it's actually easier for you to work with and actually it on top of that makes a modeler which means that you can add this component into other actors for example the enemy ais and now they also have the functionality to attack and you are not stuck to you know copy and paste it into that enemies um because you had it all in the benchcraft of the player now you can add it modularly which is really, really cool cool so a lot of people are not aware of that i just wanted to point that out um, a similar thing is done in Unity where you use scripts as components and things like that. So if you come from Unity, this will actually make sense. If you come purely from Unreal, it might be a cool thing to add into your project. With that said, the next thing um, is to use subclasses, okay? So this involves basically creating childs and parents and so on. For example, let's create a new blueprint class of an actor, right? And this will be my weapon. So this will basically be my weapon master and what this means is that this will be the parent of all my weapons in my game so for example i can add a static mesh which will be the weapon mesh okay 
and then you know we can have for example some uh, values as for example the damage for this weapon which will be a float okay so this is the base mesh for well the base uh, blueprint class for our weapon now i want to have multiple weapons right i want to have you know a, a light sword a heavy sword some blades or whatever now what i can do is simply just right click and create a child from this blueprint over here and this will be bp underscore weapon underscore and then for example light sword right and now as you can see we already have this weapon mesh that we added on our parent mesh and we can just add here whatever mesh we want right and this can be our uh, you know sword mesh if we were to have one and then on the class default to have here as you can see the damage variable so i can set this to like 25 and this is the damage for my sword as you can see i'm not creating individual blueprints uh from zero for each weapon i have my parent weapon master and have childs from each with the customization and there's another way of doing this which is to create a blueprint class go to all classes and search over here for bp underscore weapon master and now i can make a child from here uh, which is the same thing right so i can create weapon uh, you know uh, heavy sword this time right or i can also like i did before right click and, and create a child from there so you prefer is your option but this is very handy when trying to create things as weapons right you have the base weapon class and then you have the subclasses with the actual individual weapons and for example if i would want to add a new property to the all the weapons right i can add on here for example mm, i don't know that whatever other variable right and now this variable will be on all the childs which is really cool so this is an example of you know things that we can uh, implement and do which is really really cool um okay so next tip over here is to use interfaces um a lot of people normally use cast into classes and that's okay to start with and even in the long term uh, there's many many cases where I myself are going to be using casting but there's some other cases that we might need to use an interface and basically an interface will allow us to communicate with other classes without directly having a reference to that class which will both save memory because we don't need to load that class into memory and also it will just make our code more efficient okay so let me go ahead and create a uh, blueprint class over here let me do it in my attack folder because it makes sense all right and i'm gonna go into the blueprint section and create a blueprint interface let's name this something as bpi so you know standing out for blueprint interface underscore uh, attack um, interface right so on here what i can do is go and start to create new functions as you can see we have automatically created a new function actually you cannot see it because of my camera let me move it real quick over here there we go and you can see that we have created a new function right so this new function right now can be called for example uh, attack right and our player can call this new function and this will have an input right what um damage we are having well more than the damage let's say that it is the equipped weapon right what specific weapon we have right now and this can be you know a class reference so um for example a weapon uh, master class reference and overall that's that cool so with that said now i could go right and add this interface onto one of my classes right in this case this will input something right so i can go to my weapon master go to class settings add this bpi uh, attack interface double click on the interfaces and on here what I can do is have this to do something, right? Uh, so in here I can receive this weapon and do something, which is really cool. Or we could go the other route. So let me delete this, right? Let me go to here, expand this, remove this, this interface, yes. And do it instead on the um, attack system component. So I could add also here the interface, right? And I can go, that would click on here. And you know, when we attack, um, do something right and on the weapon master i could go and whenever we attack right i could go and, and pass the information uh, this is actually better done i think with a simple interact uh, prompt right so for example let me create a blueprint interface which is bpi gonna be um interact and this can be for example interact right over here 
in the input I can put parameters or also output. Let's leave it like this for you can see this. So I can go right and add this into a new uh, object that we want to interact. For example, imagine that this is a chest, right? Right now I don't have any chest models, but let me just put uh, this background cube, right? Drag this over here. Okay, so this is my chest. Uh, I chose the worst possible mesh over here. Um, okay, so yeah, this is gone, right? Okay, so this right now is my chest over here, right? And overall, you know, I cannot really do anything with it. Um, but if I go and add this interface, right, I can do stuff. So I can implement this uh, function. And we can do things as, for example, destroy this actor, right? Whenever we interact with it. So in here, when we pass on the logic, uh, when we receive this event, I can go into the, uh, you know, attack system, or let's go better into the third person character blueprint, right? And whenever I press, for example, the E key over here, I'm gonna do a simple system to break and interact with this. I can do a for each loop, and I can just go through the overlapping actors, okay? So, um, what I want to do is check if it does implement this interface, right? We're checking that this interface that I'm colliding this has the BPI Interact. If it does have this interface, I want to interact with it. So as you can see, now is the key, okay? I'm gonna go and simply type Interact, and boom. Now, I have this Interact function without needing to access the chest class. Normally, I would need to cast to BP chest and from there do the interact, okay? But now, I no longer need to do this. I can directly get a class and just interact with it. And if it does have that interface implemented from the settings, it will execute whatever is defined over here. So you will see that right now, it should destroy the actor, right? So in here, if I go, this should destroy the actor. So let me quickly just make sure that this has a collision so I can detect it. This will be a bit bigger. And now when I go and press the E key, boom, it destroys. And I'm now directly going ahead and needing to, you know, specifically cast that class, which is now doing it better. Cool functions are very useful. Uh, I have more videos in depth and in detail if you want to see uh, that over there. Anyway, with that said, we also have more things as, for example, uh, you know, obvious other stuff as, for example, splitting everything into custom events and functions, right? Not having everything in the same graph, but overall having functions to execute the code and call it, or also have custom events that we could call to do things, right? Also another thing that actually not a lot of people know, which is that we could create subgraphs. So for example, this is gonna be the input and I could change all this into this graph and we have the input graph. Um, so we don't need to use only the main events graph by default, we can create subgraphs, which is really cool. Um, and on top of that, of course, functions and also things. Now, a thing for functions is imagine that I have here the interact uh, system, right? Or the attack system. So here I can attack, right? Um, on here, what I can do is create local variables that will only exist within this function. So for example, I could go over here and just put in uh, the values of the attack speed, right? And I can do a calculation over here. Imagine that you need to get the attack speed and divide it by some value over here to get the appropriate one, whatever, right? Imagine we need to do that. Well, the cool thing is that I can use the attack speed variable in only this function. So as you can see, I've created a local variable, which is used here. But when I go to my bank graph and get the attack speed, it doesn't show up. Why? Because it only exists in this uh, function which is very, very useful when going a bit bigger and having a lot of variables on functions, right? Which maybe doesn't uh, make sense to have global, right? I see a lot of people, you know, creating global variables for only uh, variables being used in a function. Now, this is where local variables come in. So, you know, know that down because it is extremely, extremely, extremely useful. And I do really, really recommend that. All right. So with that said, that's pretty much what I wanted to go in this video. If you want to see actually more um, kind of tips or blueprint practices, let me know down in the comments below. Let me know what you think about this different type of format video where it's no edited, you know, it's more straight to the point. 
and overall is you know i have my face cam and it's, it's a bit different from the normal kind of uh, you know videos that i do uh, so let me know what you think about that and experiment with that um, but don't worry that the main tutorials will keep on with the same style and everything that's the good game style so don't worry about that but i'm just trying out you know different things for um different kind of videos that i don't usually do as you mentioned anyway also i want to mention that i'm currently um offering um, people to participate in one of my videos as a challenge so i actually posted an announcement last night on my discord server so if you are not already in go ahead and join my discord server and you can actually participate through a form link uh, that i announced yesterday and with that said, if you found this video interesting, I would really appreciate it if you like the video and subscribe to my channel. I love to go into five videos and tell so check them out. Join my Discord server, follow me on my socials, and now yes, with all I said, bye bye.